Okay, what I need to have you do as we go through this discussion of using the graphing calculator to graph quadratics, I need you to grab your yellow packet of notes and find the section 5.3 that looks like this. Okay, section 5.3, it goes through and talks to you about how to graph a quadratic function and how to use some features on the calculator to find things like x-intercepts, to find the vertex. Um, we have some techniques for doing that when they are nice points, but if they're not so nice, the calculator can help us out a lot with this. So um, find those notes, the yellow packet, unit five, graphing quadratic equations, and um, you're gonna look for section 5.3. So I'm going to go down to the bottom and we're going to graph a quadratic function and follow along with your notes as we go through example one, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use the calculator to graph the function. So if you look at the very top of the page, it goes through the steps on how to graph the function. So we do know some things about this already. We know that because A is positive, this opens up. We know it's going to have a minimum point at the vertex because there's a low point when the problem opens up. We know that the domain is negative infinity to infinity. And we know that the y-intercept is 0, 1 because when x is 0, the y value is going to be c, and c is 1. So we know lots of things about this already. Um, we're going to use the calculator to help us find the other things that maybe um, aren't quite as easy. So we could find them by hand. We could do that, but we're going to use the calculator. So we're going to um, pull up our calculator and I'm going to follow along with the TI-83 plus. This is a TI-84 plus that you're seeing, but the TI-83 plus is pretty similar. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click the Y equals key. Notice it comes up in red when I click it. So I'm clicking the Y equals key. And when I do that, what I see is over here on the right side. And I need to type in my function, which is Y equals five. So I'm gonna type in the five. And then I need an X squared. So I come up here to the X T theta N, and that gets me an X. Notice it's red when I push it. So you can see where those keys are on your calculator and it's right next to the alpha key, the green alpha key. All right, so now I need the x squared button. I'm just following along with my, um, with my notes here. We press the y equals button to type in our function. To type in x, we do the x t theta n key. Um, if we wanna do an, a square, there is an x squared button. Okay, I need to type in the rest of it. So I'm gonna do a subtraction sign. Remember, there's a difference between the subtraction and the negative button. I want the subtraction button. We're subtracting 12, and then I need an x. So I'm going to go back to the x t theta n, and then a plus 1. And at this point, I can just graph, and it will show me the graph. Now, the standard screen is um, negative 10 to 10 on both the x and the y axis. Um, notice we do have a parabola that opens up. And what I'd like to do next is find the vertex. So I'm going to do the vertex next and we'll get the x-intercepts. Actually, um, yeah, let's do them in order. Let's do the vertex. And those instructions are um, on our notes. So let me pull them up. Um, if I want to find the vertex, I do this. Now, just to mention here, if people have changed the window, you can get it back to the standard negative 10 to 10 on both the X and the Y axis by using the zoom keys. Just a maybe useful information there for you. But we're gonna find the vertex next. So look at the steps for finding the vertex. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push second and trace. And notice that's a second function, and in blue is CALC, which stands for calculate. So it's going to pull up a menu, 
and it pulls up a menu where I can find minimums, maximums, I can find values, zeros, lots of other stuff. What I'm looking for right now is the vertex, which I know is a minimum. So I'm going to select a minimum. So I'm going to arrow down to option number three, or I can just push the number three either way. So I'm going to highlight option three and click enter. Now it's asking me for a left bound. So look at the where the cursor is at, see where the flashing cursor is. Okay, and also see at the bottom it asks for a left bound. So what I have to do is I have to make sure I have my cursor flashing to the left of one of those, uh, to the left of the vertex, and it already is, right? If I want to, I can move it closer to the vertex. It doesn't really have to be, but I can move it closer if I want. But the point that is flash flashing right now is on the left of the vertex. So I push enter and set my left bound. And then I have to move the cursor to the right of the vertex and set the right bound. So is my cursor to the right of the vertex? Yes. So I push enter. And now it's always going to ask for a guess. Um, that's not what I want. I want it to be sure. So right now it's guessing and it's not at the vertex. So I'm going to push enter. Okay. And there it tells me what my minimum is. So notice that the X value is 1.200003. Calculator is not going to be exact, but I'm guessing it's exactly 1.2. And we can check that out using our formula X equals negative B over 2A. And Y equals negative 6.2. So I'm going to go put those on my notes. 1.2 for the X, negative 6.2 for the Y. Remember to write it as an ordered pair. So we'll come back over here and for our vertex, remember we're finding our vertex here, we're going to put in our notes 1.2 for the X, negative 6.2 for the Y. So there's our vertex. Now once we have that, we know our axis of symmetry is the line X equals 1.2. And we know that our range is from k to infinity, so negative 6.2 to infinity. And the only thing left for us to find is the x-intercepts. So let's go back to our notes here for a second. Oops, the notes. And we're going to find, <laughs> we're on the notes. We're going to find the, oh, let's talk about how to find the y-intercept if it wasn't a pretty point. Okay, so let me show you how to do that. And we'll let the calculator check for us. So I'm going to look at the y-intercept. I will go through that, and then we'll do the x-intercepts. Um, but it's just as easy to plug in 0 to the equation. But I'll show you how the calculator will do it for us. So let me pull up my calculator, and I'm going to clear. And with my graph on the screen, if I want to find the y-intercept, we graph the equation. We do second and trace. And I need the option for value. OK? So option 1 is already highlighted. I'm going to push Enter. Notice the cursor at the bottom. You're going to enter the x value you want to work with. So I'm going to enter x equals 0. I'm just going to type it in. Type in x equals 0. I'm going to push enter on the calculator. And it tells me that when x is 0, y is 1. So down there at the bottom of the screen it tells us. So we can have the calculator actually find points on the graph for us by typing in an x value and it will calculate the y value for us. We can also use the table feature and it will give us values of x and y that are paired together. So it'll calculate y values for different x's, and we could, we could use that. All right, so let's go to, um, let's go to the graph, and let's go to find the x-intercepts. So you have your graph on the screen, and I'm going to push second and trace once again. And this time I'm going to ask it to find the zeros. Zeros are the x-intercepts, so I'm going to either push 2 or highlight option 2 and push, push enter either way. And I have two x-intercepts that I have to find, so I'm going to have to go through this process twice. 
So it's looking for a left bound. So it's looking for a point that is on the left side of the intercept that I want to find. So notice where my cursor is at. It's flashing on the left side of that x-intercept. The x-intercept is right on the x-axis. And I'm going to click Enter to tell that I want that for my left bound. And then I'm going to use my arrow, my right arrow, to move to the right so that I'm on the right side of that intercept. And I push Enter again. Right now it's guessing. Push Enter one more time. It'll tell you what that intercept is. Um, all right. So we have when x is 0 0.0864. So I'm going to round that to 0 0.086 as one of my x-intercepts. So I'll go back and put that in my notes. 0 0.086. The next digit notice is a 4. So 0 0.086 will work. So I'm going to go back here. One of my x-intercepts is 0 0.0 eight, six comma zero. And then I have to find my other one. So let me go back and find my other one. So go back to my calculator and I'm going to clear this. Now I want the other intercept. So second and trace, which gets me to calculate. I'll push option two for zeros and I need to move my cursor so that it is to the left of the other x-intercept because I need to find the other one. So left bound is right there. So we use these bounds to tell it which one of those intercepts we're looking for. So I have to tell it where I want the left bound and where I want the right bound. So I want the right bound on the right side of my intercept that I'm currently looking for. Push enter. Still guessing. So if I push enter again, it should tell me what that intercept is. And look at that. Uh, my y value is not exactly zero. Notice it's not exactly zero. Right there, it's not exactly zero for that y value. But it's close enough. Um, the calculator can only approximate. That's as close as we're going to get. So we're going to do 2.31, 2.313 for our x value and zero for our y value. So go back to my notes. And I'm going to put in, whoops, I clicked on the wrong one. And I'm going to put in 2.313 comma 0 for my other x-intercept. And we are finished. Okay. I'm going to go through a second example where we're going to type in a different function and find the key features for it. Now, some of this we already know. We know that this one opens down because the a value is negative, right? But we'll go ahead and we'll just do everything with the graph and we'll use our knowledge to double check some things. So I'm gonna go back to my y equals and I'm gonna clear that one. So I'm gonna push the clear button and I'm gonna start over. So now I have on my calculator, I have a screen to type in my function that I wanna graph. So this time, uh, I'm not going to use the subtraction button. I'm going to use the negative button because I'm doing, I'm not subtracting. I'm multiplying something by negative one. So I'm going to do negative. And you can type in a one if you want, or you can just go with the parentheses. And then I need to do X. So X T theta N is the key I push to get the X minus four. Now it's subtract. And now I'm going to do the squaring button. Oops. I got to have a parentheses. Let me put my parentheses in there. Then I'm going to do the square. Keep track of what you're typing in. Um, and now I'm going to do a subtract 2. Not, an, not the negative button. That would be wrong. We go back. If we make a mistake, we delete it, and we type in what we need. So the subtraction button, and then a 2. And we can graph that thing. Notice our parabola opens down. Right? Do you notice what happens with this one? There are no x-intercepts because the parabola is completely below the x-axis. All right, so there won't be any x-intercepts. We can find the vertex. Um, we could even find the vertex because it's in vertex form. We could just read it from the equation or we can use our techniques. I think I'm gonna, um, 
Mm, I'm going to use the techniques. So let me go back and fill out some things on the, on the notes. So directional opening is down, which we knew, right? We knew that was down. There are none for the x-intercepts. There are none because all of the y values are negative. There is a y-intercept, and that's going to be 0 comma something. We'll let the calculator find it for us. Um, the vertex, let's see, uh, a times x minus h squared, h is 4, plus k, so k is negative 2, so it should be 4, negative 2. See if that fits with your graph. Uh, the vertex is a maximum axis of symmetry, and that maximum value is y equals negative 2 at that vertex if, if we need that. Axis of symmetry is going to be the line x equals 4. Domain is all real numbers. Range should be from negative infinity up to negative 2, including negative 2, and we're done. But let's just practice. If you need more practice with the calculator, we'll talk about how to find Oh, I haven't done the y-intercept completely yet, so let's go back for sure. So if I want to find that y-intercept, look in your notes where it tells you how to find the y-intercept. Okay, right there, y-intercept. So you graph the function. We've done that. We're going to follow through the rest of those steps. So we're going to do second and trace, and we're going to calculate the z z z z we're going to calculate a value. Let me make sure I'm following my instructions. I'm going to calculate a value. So I need option one. I'm going to enter x equals zero, and I'm going to push enter, and it's going to tell me that y is negative 18. So my y-intercept is zero, negative 18. And I could have found that by um, hand. So zero and negative 18 is my y-intercept. Oops, I wanted the eraser. 0 and negative 18. Okay. And if we needed more practice, we could go back and we could play with some of these other things. Let me clear that. And let me suppose I wanted to find the vertex. So I look at my instructions on how to find the vertex. I do second and trace. This time I want to find a maximum, so I'm going to go down and select option 4, push enter. Um, I need a left bound. Where is my cursor? I can't find it. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Notice I had to get into the window, or get my cursor into the window, so I just kept clicking to the right. Uh, Notice it shows you where your cursor is at. At the bottom, it shows you where it's at. Okay, to get the X big enough to be in the screen. Okay, so I could use that as my left bound, so let me push Enter. Now I'm going to arrow over. I'm just arrowing to the right, and I could use that as my right bound. Once it says Guess, if you click Enter one more time, it should tell you. Click Enter. Oh, 3.99999, look at the calculator's a little bit off because we're smarter than the calculator. It's 4 comma negative 2, which is what we had, right? And we don't have to worry about finding x-intercepts because there aren't any. And that is how we can use the calculator to help us with graphing quadratic functions.